with Austin Price and Jesse Simonton, Brent Hubs, VolQuest.com. Tennessee beats UAB 30-7. to The Volunteer defense pretty dominant all night long. They only give up 237 yards of offense. They force um, the three interceptions and the fumble as well, four turnovers that they turn into points. As you look at this thing, big kind of big picture, what's your takeaway from, from tonight? Either one of you jump in. D- defense continues to show, uh, but the offense continues to show that, you know, they can drive it 20 to 20, but they bog down pretty hard, you know, when they get in the red zone. They're just, I mean, they're, they're, they're just not great decisions. I, I won't say bad play call, I just, but it just, the, the, for whatever reason, they just kind of hit a wall, you know, when they get to the 20. Yeah, honestly, I think this game kind of unfolded how I expected it. I, I thought it would maybe be a little sloppy and slow to start just because the, the, this is the first cold front we've kind of had and you, you knew that the injuries we kind of talked about. Now, I was surprised, admittedly, and I put this in the game thread, at how quickly they turned to Garantano considering he has seven screws in his hand. He just got surgery six days ago. But I thought the defense would play well because I didn't think UAB would really be able to run it, so that would make them one-dimensional. We talked about it in the Friday pod hubs. They led, they led Conference USA despite their 6-1 and one record in turnovers. Tennessee, I thought the game plan was great early on. He throws it right to Bryce, first play. Now those alley-oops that Jeremy Pruitt talked about after the game weren't really slam dunks, though, because as, as Austin's saying, Tennessee's just inability to put touchdowns uh, or convert red zone trips into touchdowns remains a big problem. And that's something that, frankly, if they're going to beat Kentucky and Missouri on the road the next two games, they got to figure that out. They rank last in the SEC. I think they're the third worst FBS, so D1 team in the country in converting red zone trips to touchdowns. That's coming into Saturday, and it only looked worse, obviously, with a couple field goals, had, to, had the JG interception. So sloppy on one side. You did run the ball a little bit with Ty. I thought Ty broke off a couple big ones. Um, but, I mean, the story is, is definitely going to be kind of a dominant, suffocating defense. And you, you exited with no real injuries, and you're on to next week. Well, when you look at this defense, Austin mentioned it, you know, guys getting better. Aubrey Solomon, by far his best, he showed the most he's shown all season long today uh, with, with the four tackles. He had a sack, he had a fumble recovery in the game. Uh, we, we've talked about. You know, Darrell Middleton, who didn't have a bunch of tackles, but he took up space. Henry, you know, Henry Had the, had the force fumble in the, in the scoop. Yeah, well, and, and – um, I should say. But, but Henry T seems to play better. You know, Batuli was really quiet tonight. Not a, not a whole lot out of him. But overall, I think the soundness of this defense is clean. what, what they continues to Clean. They kept showing is it clean. Yeah, but – Wasn't penalties. Well, but they, they don't have the bust. They don't have the bust that they were having earlier in the year. They're, they're, they're just more – I mean, not, they had some bust, and they had some bust on that last drive with some young players, but you don't see a lot of guys running wide open as you were seeing earlier in the year. They, they, have, they have become a more sound defense at all three levels, in my opinion. I would, I would agree. I would really say since, this, since the end of the Georgia game. It's really that second half of the Georgia, you know, uh, because obviously against Mississippi State, then they played well outside the first two series against Alabama. Um, some, some of that was short field as well that the Tide took advantage of. The defense is, is just, you know, they're a cohesive unit and they're playing kind of, they're playing complimentary. Crouch gets the pressure and, the, and, and that, that leads to one interception. Toa Toa gets the tip that leads to another interception. I thought the way they've kind of utilized Schamberger, he did a nice job on the slot uh, tonight, but also, you know, d- 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 disguising some of the blitzes, him coming off pressure. I mean, he basically decapitated uh, the, the quarterback on that one play. So it, it's all kind of working in unison. McCullough, they didn't miss a beat um, with with no Theo Jackson. You saw Bryce actually get his third interception on something that we talked a lot about during the spring. You know, the big thing, who's going to play star? Who's going to play inside? Well, Schamberger's done a good job there, but Pruitt even alluded to after the game, they would have liked to play Bryce some at that star money spot. Because they have confidence in McCullough and some others, they move, and Kenneth George, you know, out on the boundary, they move Bryce inside, got those that right to him again. You know what I mean? And so, and that's, you know, just kind of some of the building confidence and trust, I think, both with the players and the staff. I thought he really, he had a great shot for four. They had one that he jumped a route and the ball got tipped. I don't know if you saw that. And he was, I mean, he jumped up now because he knew that, and that one would have scored because there was nothing in his way. Uh, you know, but I mean, he he 
a lot of that goes back to what the you know the guys were saying in the you know the post game, just how much film Bryce watched. Because I mean, I, you know, that second pick, I thought he just kind of, you know, sat there right in a, in a in a perfect spot, and of course he jumped that first route. Yeah, and he, I mean, he he's clearly getting some confidence back, and uh, is 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 knocked off all the rust, and, and is playing you know better. I, you know, I don't want to pick on Tyler Johnson because he went out with a knee injury that that looked pretty significant. But he throws the ball, as we talked about, he throws the ball up for grabs. And, and he, he's pretty loose with the football, and that, that showed up in a, in a big-time way tonight. By the way, congratulations to Dylan Hopkins. What a thrill for him to get to throw a touchdown pass and, and play in, in a game in, in Neyland Stadium. Now, he's, it's going to be on him because this is going to be his football team, it looks like, for a while here. And, and, we'll and they're see facing how, their toughest stretch, too. But, yeah, yeah I thought that was a cool moment for the kids. Yeah, we'll yeah. see how he, he progresses. You and I did that one video with him, like, when he comes to camp, yeah. yeah. yeah on, on one of those state tours and, and traveling around to the camps. So plenty of good plenty of good with the defense continuing to grow there. Offensively. Um, Clunky. Yeah, mixed bag. I mean, you know, a couple months they got tied loose on a couple things. Juwan had uh, a couple of catches. Juwan had a crossing route. Surprised they didn't do the crossing route stuff any more than they did. They wanted to make it clear they had tight ends on the roster that could catch the ball and they throw the ball to the tight ends. Uh, in part because Mr. Washington was in town, but we talked about it pregame. They were going to target the tight ends, and the tight ends had six uh, completions on the night uh, with the ball thrown their their way. Six of the thirteen completions went to tight ends. But I think the bigger the bigger thing for me is we saw some old Jared tonight in terms of him holding on to the ball too long. Guys were open, seemed to be late getting him getting the ball there. He took way too many hits. Tennessee took way too long to get an adjustment out to help with some of the edge pressure. And then on the interior, the big nose tackle caused Tennessee a lot of problems. Yeah, I mean, I just think, you know, we're sitting in this space a week ago, and, every, and you know, not us, but there was a lot of, oh, well, maybe Tennessee's got three really got off good quarterback. They, do they have enough balls well, to go around? Well, no, I mean, I can, we, we sit here and I don't know about balls to go around, but I, I did say you had to feel much better about that room than you did a month before. Because you had three guys that had came in, and going again a week ago, you know, Mauer wasn't out there, but the other two had, you know, made throws to help Tennessee win the game. So oh, they, they so, absolutely so in that did. That theory, yes, I did. They, I they, said that they absolutely did. But we all, I, I specifically, I think, at least expressed some skepticism and surprise, specifically in Trout's performance. We've seen Jared have his moments throughout the years. But Trout looked a lot like the guy we heard about him in this fall. I mean, his first throw of the game. He starts the game, first throw on the third down right after the interception, nearly gives it right back to UAB. Chris Winkie meets him, on, meets him on the sidelines and says, don't ever make that pass again. Jeremy Pruitt even admits after the game he was effectively pulled because of that throw or else they might have stuck with him a little bit longer. Now, it was interesting. Maurer was available, but he didn't take enough reps, so they went to a guy that – Pruitt wasn't comfortable with starting because it was cold outside and has seven screws in his hand. This, 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 again, that's just why the whole operation, and I have it in my, I'm having my story, it just felt clunky. Yeah, it, it did. I mean, because it was, and, and I don't think, Austin, that it was this big cloak of secrecy all week. I think they really weren't sure what they were going to do. Early in the week, <sighs> That I'm telling you, and you, not, you know this as well. You and I have talked about this. Early in the week, it was going to be Maurer. That was, everybody believed it was going to be Maurer was going to be the starting quarterback. Then as the week progressed, you heard less Maurer. And then on Thursday, you heard that J.G. took his most reps on Thursday. Yeah, I told you Thursday that I was told that, that J.G. took almost all the reps Thursday. And, and the person I talked to said, I don't know if it's just let him get as many reps and that way he feels – if he has to go in, there's some, some he's he's really worked with the cast and stuff, or he's actually going to play, you know. Um, but I mean, it was pretty clear. I mean, it I mean, it is a bit bizarre, and I mean, Jeremy, you know, <laughs> he he doesn't like the question that's asked. But I mean, like you you play you know you you play Shroud, you know, one series, and I get it. He came in, you know, run, run, and then he threw across his body, but the ball didn't get picked off or anything. I mean, I know it wasn't a great throw, but didn't warrant going back out for a second series. I mean, it just seems it, it seems like the leash for JT is about as long as your pinky. Well, and then and then I asked, I even asked you, you know, so then what was the decision making to put JT back in the game? Was that because Jarrett threw that bad interception in the red zone, or was that another pre-described type of deal? 
And Jeremy said, well, we always had plans to put him back in, but I guess because he made the bad throw in the red zone that it wasn't picked, as AP said, you know, Jeremy said that we wanted to keep JG in the game when we had these scoring opportunities. And then they obviously put JT back in the game for the first series. They go three and out, and he doesn't come back in until the game's over. Yeah. And so the question, obviously, everybody's going to ask all week long as they get ready for Kentucky. What do you do now at that position? Well, and, and I, I mean, don't you think that it's going to be Jarrett plus X? And I, I think it makes probably more sense that X Or X, X plus or Jared. Or X plus Jarrett, that's with, true. With X being that's the true. starter. It's almost, it's almost like Jarrett's the pin. You know, we're going I, to the bullpen. It, How early they're doing, are we they're going doing the ten, They're doing the Tampa Bay Rays, uh, <laughs> you know, o- Oakland Athletics thing where you, you your starter is actually your reliever. Yeah. And then, so that's kind of what it feels, you know, I think from a management standpoint, they seem to be, between between Jared and JT, it's very clear that Jared's the guy they're most comfortable with. Now, the whole Maurer thing, he was available, but he didn't practice enough reps. That, that one's that was a little bit interesting to, to, to see what they do there. I wonder if this week, Maurer and JT get the, I mean, Maurer and Jerry get the bulk of the reps this week. Uh, and maybe that's you go you go back to those two guys with less with just J T Shroud. I I don't know, but they're going to have to get better. The, the quarterback's going to have to play better than they play tonight. They played great against South Carolina. They didn't play well tonight. Part of that was some on them, and part of it was they couldn't protect up front. Those, I mean, Jared took a Jared took a big beating tonight. Now, he maybe, did. Maybe right. a couple times weren't his fault, but a couple of those. He didn't have a chance on those either because they did not protect well off the edge. They had a hard time with interior pressure, too. Seven tackles for loss for UAB, who does have a good defense. I'll give him credit. That defense is pretty legit. Wanye got pulled. Tatum goes in. Tatum gets pile drive back. Or, excuse me, Calvert went in. They flipped Tatum. Uh, it was not yeah, – it was not – Wanye had some issues – both in the run game and um, in pass protection, Calbert and Tatum uh, at times were serviceable. At times, were, were just as bad. And and you know Kennedy, as AP you know said in the two minute at post game, Kennedy won lineman of the week a week ago, and he kind of had perhaps you know his toughest game of the season. I mean that that big old rascal number ninety was giving him problems, uh, you know, a lot on, on Saturday night. So this is it. You know, I guess, you know, if you're taking the optimistic view of this, you know, you win 30-7 to and Jeremy Pruitt's got plenty of stuff that he can kind of take to the practice field and say, hey, boys, this is what we got to fix if we want to go win two SEC games and get back to a bowl game. Well, you got you to find a way to win one on the road, and then you come back home. I mean, uh, I, mean I mean, I know you want to win out, but, right. it, it, but, but bare minimum, you got to find a way to win on the road or coming out of the bye on the road at Missouri. Well, and I think the question for next week is how healthy can they get in some spots. Where's Darnell Wright at? How much better is Wanye going to be next week compared to where he was this week? He's Jameer. Limited. Can he get Jameer Johnson back? Uh, some of those things I think are going to be, um, you know, question marks and, and storylines moving forward for this team. And also another storyline is the fact Kentucky's coming off a bye and Tennessee's going to be closing out their longest stretch of games of the season heading into the bye, uh, which is maybe not the great, greatest setup. I, I will say this. Tennessee offensively didn't execute the way they wanted to. I do think this team was ready to play. A lot of, a lot of, I, I wondered a little bit how would they handle some success last week. Everybody telling them they were well. I asked Jeremy Pruitt that question. They swept all the SEC honors of the week. They're getting, you know, love here and there, everywhere. I, I do think the team was ready. I don't think they executed well, but emotionally. Um, I, I thought, you know, yeah, I didn't I, think I they, thought were... they had an edge about them. They yeah, I thought flat. You no, know? no, and. When, when your defense basically, you know, pitches a shutout for 80% of the game right. and, and you get a turnover on the first play, I mean, they, they certainly seemed engaged. That Their offense, this is, like, last week was as good as, you know, we complimented Cheney about his game plan in, in Mississippi State, and it wasn't like Tennessee was running up and down the field in that game. That was how they managed the game. They left some plays out on the field against Alabama, uh, and were competitive, but that was, again, kind of managing the game. Last week is still the aberration for this season in terms of offensive output. This is a team before a week ago that was only averaging, I think, 13.5 points per game in SEC games. So, again, I'm going to use the word, the clunkiness does not surprise me, especially with just kind of the, the shuffling Tennessee's doing at the quarterback position. We hit the over, though. Two and a half, we hit the over. Three play, Jennings gets the touchdown. <laughs> That may be, and honestly, that may be their solution in the goal line. Just go more Wildcat with Juwan. 
Yeah, I don't disagree with that. I mean, he just he's tough to tackle. Right. He gets short north south. Space. He's decisive. Yeah. yeah. And, and and doesn't get in there and try to overthink it. He and, and again, he's tough to tackle. And all you have to do is run it tough four, to bring down. All you have to do is do that a couple more times, and then you have one pop pass. And he, and, and he, you save that pop pass for obviously in a very important time, but. You, you, run, you run it with Jawan a couple more times down there like that, and you, you trust him to throw a pop pass to DWA. I agree with this notion. Yeah. I mean, how many, you know, we'll talk high school football for a second. You, you, Gibbs plays Campbell County almost every year. When Campbell County gets down to the two-yard line, even though they throw it all the time, they put in like a linebacker and, and, and just direct snap it to him and let him run north-south. Right. I mean, it's similar well, type thing. And they tried to do that with Crouch. I thought Crouch missed a hole. I, I thought there was a chance there, and I think that's a product of... Were you, you surprised know, they did that from, like, the nine-yard line? No, I think there was a, some frustration there that they just... you know, it, It's it's funny because three weeks ago coming out of Alabama, there was all the Tim Jordan, Tim Jordan, Tim Jordan. He's not been able to find footing the last couple of weeks, and, and not because he's gotten no touches. He just... You know he hasn't hit it. He hasn't hit it real well. I mean, he just he's not played real well the last couple of weeks. I don't think compared to Ty. Ty has played better. And Ty also is er- is earning more reps to be on the field more because of plays like and I'll have it in my review. He stoned the hell out of a dude on pass protection on one play. Mm, I mean, did. just met the guy in the hole straight up and hit him back. And that's going to give the staff more confidence to not take him off the field and. and you know, present Jordan with more opportunities. Yeah, but I think they wanted to do – I think they went to that early to answer your question. They're trying to get a heavy in there to do something. And I think the, I think the thought process was we're just going to run it in with him. Okay, we're, we're, we're going to show, you know, we can do this. And, and then, it, you know, it didn't work out that way. Uh, but but maybe Jawan is their answer, you know, in, in the red zone. I mean, they're three or five tonight in the red zone – or four or five tonight in the red zone with a field goal and three touchdowns. Um, so it wasn't like they were awful. It's just early when you got a chance to jump on somebody, they, they didn't perform well with the short field the, the way that they need to. And for an offense that we sit here and talk about, not sure how many times they're going to be able to drive it, 14, 15 plays, 87 yards. When you get the short field like that, you really want to capitalize on it and knock a team out. They end up winning 30-7. to seven. The game was never in doubt. They didn't knock – knocked them out as early. I mean, that could have been 14 nothing right out of the gate. And, and I think that's what Jeremy Pruitt gets to go to his team with, uh, you know, tomorrow and, and Monday to say, hey, you know, you're going to beat the SEC boys? When that, when you get a short field like that, we got to have touchdowns, not field goals. And, and again, I think this, coach can, this coaching staff continues to need those lessons for this young team to continue to, to improve and, and grow and get better. Well, I mean, <laughs> again, I think the – the lessons you learned tonight, you know, Wanye, who held his own at right tackle a week ago, got straight whipped tonight. I think that's a good wake-up call for him because it brings him back down to earth a little bit. You know, same thing with Brandon Kennedy. And Kennedy's not like a, you know, you know, thinks he's all that in the bag of potato chips. But, you know, I think it's a good wake-up call when you know next week's going to be just as tough on the road and, and, and what will be a game that Kentucky wants to win in the worst way because they still can get to eight wins this year. Yeah, and and, and that's Tennessee's a, the t- really to me the toughest game Kentucky has left on the schedule. You know, they they play Louisville, they play Vanderbilt, and they play some other little school. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it, it is the tough. I mean, and they're coming off a bye, and, and Kentucky's good in the line of scrimmage. That's that's a good football team in the line of scrimmage. Again, Juan Jay's got to practice. Probably missed too much practice time. Had some limitations this week trying to manage guys and everything. Um, and, and just, you know, he had a freshman night. He didn't play well. And as, as Jesse mentioned, they weren't awful by any means, just clunky. Clunky offensively, uh, continued to be good defensively and, and played well tonight defensively. I guess an offense that's not great by any means, but, but Tennessee made sure they weren't great. They never let them get in a rhythm tonight at all with the way that they played uh, and, and the way that they took control of the game. So we'll talk about it with you on the General's Quarters. That's going to do it for this post-game podcast. For Jesse Simonton and Austin Price, I'm Brent Hubbs. Have a great night, everybody.